Question 13 then from the 2022 Higher Maths Paper 1. Six mark question here. First part, show that this is a factor of this function. Notice it's a cubic function, so immediately think that will be the table then. For two marks, show that that's a factor. And then the second part, hence or otherwise. Well, you're going to do it the hence way probably, which is you put down the table. So that's what we're going to use. But there are a couple of other ways. So this will be quite lengthy because I'll do them as well. Because hence or otherwise, you have to solve this equation equal to zero for three marks. Well, showing that this is a factor. A factor means it divides in exactly. So if it divides in exactly, the remainder is zero. So you should set out your table as a synthetic division table to show that the remainder is zero. There is another way. There's the factor theorem which says this will be a factor of that if putting whatever the value of x is that makes it equal to zero, in other words, negative two, if putting negative two through this gives an answer of zero. So you could either work out f of negative two by putting it into this, and if it comes to zero, you can then say by the factor theorem, that's a factor. But since you're going to carry on to solve this and you really want to find the other factor, you're better off using the division route. So setting out that table. That table, which you were probably introduced to as the nested form of this expression here, but which when you go through it actually produces very useful results. You make this up with these coefficients, you have to make sure they're all there. One for every power of x, and they're all there anyway. One, negative two, negative 20, negative 24. Now, take the root of this equal to zero. In other words, put negative two through it. Now, doing that to start with, putting down this table gets the first mark. Now you just proceed. So it adds down. You add down and you multiply up by this. So multiplying up by negative 2, add down negative 4. Multiply up by negative 2, positive 8. Add down negative 12. Multiply up by negative 2, 24. Add down and there's the remainder. Well, that's got two meanings. As a nested table, that's the value of this function at negative 2. If you put negative 2 into here and feed it through all this, and work it out, it'll come to zero. Just the way in the first place, if you just put negative two and got the zero, you'd have said, well, f of negative two is zero, so that's a factor by the factor theorem. But since you're going to use this later on as a division, this table does it all. So I'm going to look at that as a remainder. So in part one, I'm going to say, since the remainder equals zero, that must mean that x plus 2 is a factor. You have to get both those parts. Now the part, hence or otherwise, well there are some otherwises, solve f of x equal to 0. Well, we'll just rewrite that again. So that's x cubed minus 2x squared minus 20x minus 24 has to equal 0. Now, the way you solve that would be to factorise it. But that's what this table does. That's a division. That tells you that if you divide this into this, it goes in exactly this amount. So multiplying them will produce this. So this will be made from x plus 2 times what this says. And this, these just are the coefficients of a quadratic. So that would be 1 lot of x squared minus 4 lots of x minus 12. Now extracting that quadratic from the table gets you a mark. In other words, just realising that that's the quotient and it represents a quadratic. Factorise it. Well, it's just x times x. Multiply to give 12 with a difference of 4. That'll be 2 and 6. That's negative, so that will get the negative. The 6 will get the negative, and that must be plus. Factorising it gets a mark. Now, you could go on and say x plus 2 squared. It doesn't add anything to what's required in the question. If the question had simply said factorise, then yes, you'd probably tidy that up and just put x plus 2 squared. But as it is, it just says solve the equation. So you can see the two solutions. Either x equals negative 2. Maybe I'll put a wee note as a double root. That's significant for the graph. 
x equals negative 2 or x equals 6. Now the otherwise, so you can just skip to part b, which is really quite quick. But the otherwise would be, to show that this is a factor, actually carry out the division physically. You know, the synthetic way. In other words, actually divide x plus 2 into that expression. So setting out just like a normal division. Normally you'd have the numbers there, units, tens, hundreds, thousands. It's the same with the powers of x. Well, x plus 2, how many times could it go in? And you'd start at this part here. Well, to get x to become an x cubed, I'd have to multiply by x squared. So x times x squared times x, x cubed, plus 2x squared. Subtract them to see what the remainder is. Negative 2, take away 2, negative 4x squared. Then you bring down the next term, 20x. How many times can x go into negative 4x squared? Well, it would need to be negative 4x. Negative 4x times x makes negative 4x squared, and that would be minus 8x when you multiply them. Now, so to subtract them to see what the remainder is, so that's negative 20 plus 8, so that's negative 12x. Bring this down. How many times could that go into this? Well, if they have to be the same, I'll have to multiply by negative 12, so that's negative 12x, and that's minus 24, and when you subtract them, it comes to zero. Which is what you did with the synthetic division table. How many times does it go in? There's the quotient. Remember the numbers? 1, negative 4, negative 12. What was the remainder? There it's there. Now it's just the same as before. You'll make the same statements. So that's just the difference in getting to that quadratic. Same statements as before. The remainder is zero. So that's a factor. And to form the factorization, it'll be the, this times that, and the rest is the same as before. Now, the third way would be to actually use the factor theorem and say that that will be a factor if the value of that function is 0 at the root of this equal to 0 at negative 2. So actually feeding negative 2 through it. So negative 2 cubed minus 2 times negative 2 squared minus 20 times, whoops, negative 2 minus 24. So you've got that'll stay negative. That'll stay negative as well, and that's still going to be an 8. But that goes to plus 40, but minus 24. I don't know why I keep writing. That's like Saturn, the symbol for Saturn there. That adds up to 40, adds up to 40, so that equals 0. In which case you'd make the statement, f of negative 2 is 0. That means that x plus 2 is a factor. Let's change that. So that would be the first part, once you've made the statement, obviously. Now, the second part would be, now that you know that that's a factor, you can rewrite this. That means that f of x must be equal to x plus 2, and here's where this is a much longer way. It must be x plus 2 times a quadratic, because the first times the first makes the first. And you know that it's just, it's just a coefficient of 1. So some quadratic starting x squared... I don't know how many of the x's there are. I don't know how many of the constant there are. I just know that that should equal this. Well, if you multiply that out, this is like the, the technique you could have used with completing the square. If you multiply that out, it should produce this. So multiplying that out gives you what? It gives you the x cubed plus a px squared plus a qx plus a 2x squared plus a 2px plus a 2q. In other words, it gives you one term in x squared, but one term in x cubed, 2 in x squared, that's p plus 2 lots of x squared, 2 in x, 2p plus q, and just the one term at the end, plus 2q. Quite lengthy. But now you can compare that with the original. So comparing the x squared terms, for instance, you would have p plus 2, which is the coefficient of x squared, should be the same as negative 2, which means that p is negative 4. 
Now you could go ahead and compare the x terms, but you can use them as a check after if you want. It's easier to do the constant term. The constant term just says the number at the end, 2q, should be the number at the end, negative 24, which means q must be negative 12. Now you can carry out the factorization. So it was x plus 2 times x squared plus p, which was minus 4, plus q, which was minus 12. And then proceed as before, making that equal to 0, and the rest is the same as before. Part B, just for the one mark, the diagram shows the graph of y equals f of x. Here it's here. Well, at this point you could put in some numbers because you found out where it cut the axis by finding when f of x equals 0. It happened at negative 2 and it happened at 6. Well, 6 is with single root, so that's the clean cut. That must be the negative 2 then. The double root, the bounce. It's like the cut through and the cut back through all at the same time. That must be a maximum turning point because it's a positive cube, but just referring to it as a stationary point. There's a stationary point at negative 2. So what does it say again? The graph of f of x minus k has a stationary point at 1, 0. State the value of k. Now, you know it's not talking about this stationary point because that's not on the x-axis. That's not got a y-coordinate of 0. And this graph here, x minus k, just shifts sideways. There's no change to the y-coordinates. x minus k means it's been brought forward in amount k. To find the new value of y, you have to go back to the value of x minus k to find it, and then bring it forward. Well, if instead of being at negative 2, it's now at 1, you can see you'd have to shift it forward 3, and it does just say state what it is. The graph would go forward to here, which means that if it's going forward k, negative 2 plus k took you to 1, which means k equals 3. But you could just have stated it. You could just have thought it's going forward a certain amount, so it's going from negative 2 to 1, so it's going forward 3.